So I wanted to kind of step through uh, some examples of measuring nitrogen fixation in the ocean. Um, nitrogen fixation, again, is an important mechanism that adds nitrogen to the ocean. Probably the world's best known planktonic non heterocystis diazotroph is this organism called Trichodesmium. And Trichodesmium has been focused upon mainly because it produces these, these kind of weird colonies, these tufts and puffs. You can have um, uh, these trichomes as individuals floating around in the ocean. But when there is a Trichodesmium bloom and conditions are calm, you see something like this. You see the sort of brownish water here? These things float. And so a ship traveling through the ocean sees this, this uh, brown spot in the ocean and go, something's going on here. So you dump a bucket, pull it up, and you find these trichomes. And if you inject some 15N labeled N2, you can look at the rate of uptake of nitrogen fixation. There's been a lot of experiments done that way. So it's simply because with the naked eye, you can look over to the side of the ship and see something anomalous, and you stop and go, what is that? Oh, it's got to be trichodesmia. OK, so um, there's been a lot of studies on trichodesmia, but there's a number of different nitrogen-fixing organisms. Trichodesmium, there are small heterocystis cyanobacteria that are endosymbionts in diatoms. These diatoms are rhizoselenia, and um, hemiolus is another one, but they live in the, uh, in the cell within this glass house of these diatoms, the silicious uh, tests of a diatom. There's some really nice work um, by uh, Rachel Foster, which has, domin uh, has uh, documented that symbiosis. She grew, uh, just take a, a natural um, rhizoselenia um, out of seawater, add a whole bunch of 15N labeled N2, and using the SIMS technique that uh, Howie described, on Saturday, you can do a time series of, you can see the, the cells, the, the, uh, the, um, um, the Richelia cells light up for that label in a SIMS early in the experiment, and then you can trace it leaking out into the organelles of the, uh, of the diatom as a function of time. So it, it, it appears to be a true symbiosis where rhizoselenia is um, releasing nitrogenous nutrients that the diatom utilizes. There are other, there are uh, picoplanktonic diazotrophs, really small diazotrophs. There are N2-fixing unicellular by, uh, cyanobacteria, weird ones that lack photosystem too, and the TCA cycle. There are even archaea that fix N2. Um, we can recognize nitrogen fixation in the ocean Again, we can use the natural abundance delta 15N value of particulate nitrogen. The delta 15N value of dissolved N2 is around 0.6 per mil, and there's a small fractionation. So typically, we see low values, low particulate nitrogen values as, as being recognized. But if you do have nitrate in the system that has a, a high delta 15N value, it can be difficult to uh, recognize at times. And be deviations from this red field ratio. We expect that that red field ratio will be maintained uh, in dissolved nutrients, um, the 16 to 1. If we see a deviation from that, a positive uh, N2 fixation, you add to it. If you have more nitrate than you would expect for phosphate based on that, um, uh, that uh, red field ratio, uh, this N star that's defined based on a whole bunch of data collected globally between uh, nitrate and phosphate concentrations, we see uh, an increase. We see a positive N star value. So there's a positive deviation from that red field ratio. A negative, a negative deviation uh, indicates um, uh, nitrogen loss either through um, anamox or denitrification. We can use acetylene uh, reduction. Nitrogenase reduces acetylene to ethylene, and you can measure how much ethylene is produced. There are direct measurements using uh, 15N2, and there are also molecular probes for the genes of nitrogenase. Uh, just a, a side note, if you ever 
do these experiments in the ocean and try to measure nitrogen fixation in an aquatic system. The standard protocol up to about what, maybe 10 years ago was simply take N2 gas and squirt it into a bottle that has a septa on it, keep it gas tight, and measure how much of that 15N label gets taken up. But guess what? N2 doesn't like to get dissolved in water, so the dissolution rate is slow. And so there's kind of a bias. If you shake it up a lot, you get higher rates of nitrogen fixation because you dissolve more of that label into the water. So the standard protocol now is to create a, a solution that is equilibrated with uh, 15 and labeled N2 gas and squirt a bit of that solution in to make the measurements. Okay, so let's look at a couple examples. This is a work by um, John Doerr at one of my favorite sites, um, uh, Station Aloha. And this is the delta 15N value of particulate nitrogen flux. By particulate nitrogen flux, it's the stuff that's falling through the ocean that gets caught in these things called sediment traps. These are fairly straightforward. It's a tube closed at the bottom, opened at the top, and it has a saline solution in there. So when you're putting it over the side or taking it out, things don't slosh out. So you get an indication, particles fall through, they, um, they go into the uh, open top and settle to the bottom, and you can filter the water and measure the delta 15N value. And what we see at Station Aloha is there's a seasonal cycle of N2 fixation. There's also a, a long-term uh, trend in, in um, nitrogen fixation that uh, John did this from 1989 to 2001. There's kind of a regime shift but he didn't quite catch that. He stopped a little bit too early where the, there was sort of a step change and it's kind of flat now for um, amounts of nitrogen fixation. But uh, over these decades, there appears to be a trend to greater nitrogen fixation. And John used a simple nitrogen isotope mass balance. He took the delta 15N value of N2 gas, delta 15N of deep water nitrate, and a simple isotope mass balance to calculate the fraction of N2 supported, uh, fraction, uh, the fraction of export that was supported by nitrogen fixation, and it ranges from about 35 to 60, 70% uh, as a function of time, and it changes seasonally. Um, you can argue about those N member values, you know, and this is N2 in the atmosphere, and you know there's a fractionation associated with dissolution, fractionation associated with fixation. And this might be a little bit high, but you can't argue with the overall results that nitrogen fixation was important. It's roughly 50% over that time interval in those environments. Okay, the reason that there is a seasonal cycle is due to stratification. Um, in the summertime, Waters are warm, they get stratified, and there's a lack of flux of nitrate to the surface waters, and nitrogen fixation becomes important. This is simply a, a, a contour plot of delta 15N value. These warm uh, numbers are low delta 15N value. These uh, blue numbers are high delta 15N values. And here we see that around October to around March, you know, it starts to get cold in Hawaii and the wind blows. When it gets cold, cold in Hawaii, that stratification uh, breaks down. The density gets, gets um, similar and you have mixing. So during this wintertime mixing, um, nitrate from deep water is um, brought up to the surface and it supports more um, uh, utilization in the surface. It's higher. Okay. so. Pretty straightforward. Um, one example I'd like to give, which kind of gives some insight into sort of longer term oceanic controls on nitrogen fixation, is nitrogen fixation in the, the Sea of Cortez. Again, one of my favorite places to work because the fishing's good. When we think about nitrogen fixation, we think about regions where there's not a lot of nitrate present in the ocean. 
Okay, that makes sense. There's not nitrate in the in waters. You know, fix nitrogen. It's energetic. Uh, it takes a lot of energy to do so, um, but it's a way of of uh, growth of organisms. And most recognition of nitrogen fixation has been in oligotrophic regions, but. Gulf of California is different. Gulf of California is really quite productive. It has rich biological productivity. There's even low oxygen in their intermediate waters. Okay, so this is, we're looking from north to south. This is the uh, Gulf of California. Here's the Baja Peninsula. Um, the intermediate waters, there's evidence of denitrification present in them. So that denitrification is supported by that uh, high biological productivity. In the winter, the winds kind of blow. Um, these northwest winds have this uh, mean pressure gradient that uh, causes mixing. And it mixes nitrate fr from um, the uh, deep water to the surface. And there's, there's rich biological productivity. In the summertime, uh, those winds relax. There's a, some weak. Uh, southwest uh, winds result in a monsoonal client, uh, climate. There's weak upwelling. And in general, there are low levels of primary production in the surface waters in summertime. But key to this is that the denitrified waters at depth, which are brought up to the surface, are below that redfield ratio. So as the eukaryotes utilize that nitrate, they run out of nitrogen. That N to P ratio is low, so they run out of nitrogen and there's uh, excess phosphate that's present. You have warm stratified waters with excess phosphate, nitrogen entering it. It's a region where you would expect nitrogen fixation to occur. This is a photograph of the summer in the Gulf of California. Yeah, it looks like a lake. It's wonderful. I mean, really, really flat waters there. Fishing's good too. Okay, so some clues to nitrogen fixation. There's been a couple of um, a couple of instances where there were satellite images and ships of opportunity that saw what might have been trichodesmium blooms in the uh, Gulf of California, but there were no real good documentations of nitrogen fixation. Now we were there again in July 2004, February 2005, and July 2005. Um, and when we looked at the delta 15N values of particulate nitrogen uh, seasonally, we saw some, some weird changes. In the wintertime, here's the delta 15, 13C value of particulate organic carbon. It's pretty constant with depth. The delta 15N value of particulate nitrogen kind of scattered, but no, no real structure to the profile, pretty flat. And here's N star. N star, again, is that nitrate deficit. It's negative, but it's pretty constant with depth. OK, but in the summer, the delta 15N value of, nitrate, uh, of, of particulate nitrogen here is low in the surface and increases with depth. Commiserate with that is a N star value that is low, uh, negative here, and low at depth, but it increases here. The only way you can increase N star is add new nitrogen to it. And when you add new nitrogen to it, you, you're basically changing the N to P ratio. And Associated with that is a decrease in the delta 15N value of particulate nitrogen that is suggestive of nitrogen fixation. Well, we, we saw that. Um, it had time. Uh, Angel White came along on a cruise in July 2005. Angel White is a faculty member at Oregon State University who not only looks at under a microscope and can identify nitrogen fixers, she also measured rates of nitrogen fixation on this cruise. And I'd like to show you that data. And again, here's particulate nitrogen profile. It's low in the surface, high at depth, and N star also increases. Again, indicative of addition of nitrogen um, to this, this system that, um, uh, that changes that N to P ratio. It, the Gulf of California is sort of this two-layered photic zone system. There's a, a pretty shallow surface mix layer and a deep maximum in chlorophyll that sits right on that nutricline. 
So surface mixed layer to about 15 meter, the deep chlorophyll max at about 30 meters or so. Nitrate concentrations in the surface are pretty much zero, but look at phosphate. Phosphate is high throughout that, unusually high, and both increase as um, uh, below that neutricline due to uh, degradation and respiration of organic matter. And there's a very, very steep neutricline uh, below that deep chlorophyll maximum. So these warm, stable, nitrogen poor, phosphorus, um, reactive phosphorus replete conditions, they're really ideal for nitrogen fixation. We can uh, approximate nitrogen fixation using an isotope mass balance approach. And here it's done for, well, which one was the 6, 12? That must have been uh, 2004. Um, we can, we just picking, picking some end members here to get percentage of, or the fraction of nitrogen fixation, um, percent nitrogen fixation. Take the observed value minus the upwell delta 15N value um, versus divided by the difference between what we would anticipate for nitrogen fixation minus upwell nitrogen. Uh, here an end member is taken from the literature from pure culture of trichodesmia as minus two. Um, this simple calculation gives us about 40% contribution to N2 fixation. We can do the same thing with N star. Uh, an N star value associated with nitrogen fixation is plus four. And we take the observed minus upweld, and again, we get 40%. So two independent measures of the percent of nitrogen fixation give us a similar uh, answer. 40% of the nitrogen supplied to the surface ocean is through nitrogen fixation. Okay, so a couple of Hot spots of nitrogen fixation were the Guaymas Basin and the uh, uh, Carmen Basin here to the south. Uh, stations one and two are relatively low. You know, let me just go to the integrated nitrogen fixation rates. They range from 130 uh, micromole nitrogen per meter square today, per day to 250 micromoles of nitrogen per meter square per day. Values that you would anticipate for an oligotrophic region. We find values typically around 250 micromoles of nitrogen per meter square per day in the summertime at Station Aloha. The reason we don't find nitrogen fixation here along the western margin of the Gulf of California is that monsoonal climate results in a mild upwelling of um, uh, occasional upwelling due to that monsoonal um, wind circulation. The winds are blowing and nitrates up upwelling and it's uh, dominating that nitrogen isotope signal to the, the west. But in the eastern and central Guaymas Basin where it's very nicely stratified, nitrogen fixation is important. Okay, so where we find high rates of nitrogen fixation, we also find evidence for the nitrogen fixing organisms here. We see cell counts of, you know, one times 10 to the ne negative uh, to the seventh per meter square for abundance here, 2.3 times 10 to the seventh per meter squared integrated from, you know, over the, uh, the euphotic zone. So again, good evidence for nitrogen fixation. The nitrogen fixation in the Gulf is mostly by Rochellia intercellularis, that um, symbiont within the diatom. And again, it's 40% of the surface um, mixed layer nitrogen demand. Uh, the inputs are equivalent to about 30 to 60% of previous measured nitrogen fluxes from the surface water. Again, it's very difficult to pick these out in a nitrogen isotope time series record because the isotopic composition of these particles is on the order of six per mil, and that's something that a priori you just wouldn't associate with nitrogen fixation. You really need to look at those uh, values in profile to pick, pick that out. Um, we went back there, you know, this exciting finding, and we have nitrogen fixation in the Gulf of California where it's never been documented before. Give us money to go back. We went back in the summer of 2008 looking for it, and we couldn't find it. It's very, very episodic. It probably, N to P ratios and the upwells, uh, upwelling of N to P ratios is one control on nitrogen fixation, but there are other controls. We know that the nitrogenase gene requires um, a, a metal like uh, iron, and it, it's important for nitrogen fixation as well. So 
part of that uh, story is that the delivery of, of probably dust from the, Saharan, or the, the Sonoran Desert also um, controls the distribution of nitrogen fixation in that region. 